Hello again and welcome. I thought I'd just give you a quick update on this Yokogawa TY720 and answer a couple of questions that people had. During my last video I was transient testing the meter. I had it all the way up to 6,000 volts and the meter failed. The only thing that got damaged was the capacitance mode. I've spent some time repairing the meter and I'll tell you this was a nightmare. I was unable to turn up a set of schematics for this thing. The first thing I noticed when I started to trace out the front end is all the transistors that are used for the clamps were fine and that's normally what gets damaged. You know the PTCs, the surge resistors, all that looked good. So I started tracing it up through the switch. So there were four DG444 switches that are located roughly in this area here. And it looked like the capacitance signals routed through those switches. So I thought, it's probably one of those. I'll just go ahead and change out two. And then I ended up changing out all four. It made no difference. So I posted out on the EEV blog forums to see if anybody knew any details about the meter. Unfortunately, I didn't find anybody that did. Then I just ended up hunkering down and start reverse engineering this thing. By the time it was all said and done, I had removed 13 ICs and several other discrete components to just trace out the circuit board. It was essentially a full day's work, and I did end up tracking down the problem. So the meter is functional now. I can show that to you. So again, everything worked on the meter except the capacitance mode. Let's just show you what it does with the 5 volt signal. So you can see it's still dead on. Let's go ahead and we'll attach our 40 mega ohm resistor. Here you go, 39.9. And let's just switch it to capacitance mode. Again, this is with the leads open. And you can see now the meter is reading essentially 4 picofarads. I think this thing actually zeroed out originally, so it could be off just a little bit. Seems like it took quite a while. Yeah, just takes a long time to settle out. Let's see if it gets there. There you go. So now let's try our 150 picofarads. I think it read a little low originally. You can see I haven't improved the uh, settling time. There you go, 150.0. It's uh, dead on. I think the meter was actually off a little bit before. But it could just be the way I have the leads kind of wrapped around each other right now. Let's go to a 1 nanofarad. .997. Looks pretty good. This is a .1 microfarad. See 102.1. I think that's pretty close to what all the meters read for that capacitance. Uh, this will be a 1 microfarad. See 0.998. This will be 10 microfarads. You can see it's 10.22. And this is 100 mic. You go 104.1 so you can see the meter is still quite accurate so a couple of people asked about the contrast of the meter and if it could be improved one person had asked if the zebra strips could possibly be causing the poor contrast and there's a couple of things about that one is I had had the meter apart and I of course had the display off and I did that when I was trying to hunt down what turned out to be a fuse problem and if you'd watched the video, you know that I cleaned up the circuit board after that. Typically what I see when the zebra strips start to fail is segments start to go out. It's not something where the contrast across the entire display starts to fade away. I do have a Fluke 97 scope meter that had really bad contrast. And it was basically set out in the sun in a garage. And over time the sun had just destroyed the polarizer. So I ended up buying a new polarizer lens for that. And that ended up correcting it. Now, somebody had asked if there was an adjustment for that contrast. And of course, when I was going through this thing, reverse engineering it, one of the things I was doing was printing off all the data sheets. And if we look at figure 45, you can see they are showing the contrast adjustment. So I didn't look at it, but I'm sure there's some resistor network in there that sets up the contrast. But there's a problem with trying to adjust it. Let me just show you here. Okay, I don't know if this is going to show up real well with the camera, 
but you can see that some of the segments that aren't even active right now are bleeding through so even if I could go higher what's gonna happen is I'm afraid those segments are just gonna keep bleeding right through and the display is just gonna look even worse let me try to give you a comparison between it and the BM869S Ryman had provided me with a newer meter than this BM869S. I guess it was meant to compete with the Fluke 87V. My opinion, that's what this meter does. This competes with basically everything Fluke has to offer right now. That meter that they provided me actually has a better display than the BM869S. The fonts are just slightly wider, so it makes it a little easier to read. I'm hoping at some point that they'll release a newer version of this BM869S that'll use the same battery pack as that meter and possibly offer the newer display. But this is a pretty nice meter as it stands today. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. For those of you that were sad to see the Yokogawa get damaged, here you go. You can see it's now working again. Hope you enjoyed the video. Later.